Christine Horn and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Sunday Stories. Oh wow, last week I talked about my uh, Stomp the Yard story so uh, you can check that out at the link above. And let's see, this week I want to talk to you about the time I tanked on MacGyver. Yeah, tanked. You wouldn't know it by looking at the final footage, but oh, it was brutal. Listen, if you're not subscribed to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button below, hit the little bell to get notified when I post a new video um, on this channel. I have several, uh, Actors Daily Red on Tuesdays and my vlog on Thursdays, and of course, Sunday Stories on Sunday. So, oh man, this story, it even hurts to tell, but I'm sharing it because I think it's necessary for my actors especially to know that I'm not perfect, I mess up, all of us mess up, and all of us have our off days. All of us have our off days. So MacGyver comes on, or at the time of this recording, it came on, I think, the CW network, um, is this, or CBS, ooh, CBS. Um, get your networks together, girl. Um, <laughs> and this is right before I was getting ready to move to, back to Los Angeles. So I moved back to Los Angeles top of 2017. So this was toward the end. I think we moved in February. Okay, my husband and I moved back to Los Angeles in February 2017. So it was in January. So I'm in knee deep in the middle of, um, let me turn the, make the light a little brighter. I feel like I need a little more light. Um, I'm knee deep in packing, yard sales, prepping, still working my nine to five because I'm like, I need every coin to get, you know, to travel cross country because I wasn't gonna have, you know, a day job when I got there. Like just a lot on my plate and this audition comes in and I'm like, okay, crap. Like I could use a gig like, and so I get this audition for MacGyver. I do a self tape because in Atlanta it's, you know, 95% self tape. So that's not, you know, anything weird about that. Do the self tape. I find out that I book it. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. No problem. You know, you know, I can fit this in whenever. And so I end up, it was time to it was time to shoot and i think my shoot day was like a week before i had to leave a week before we were leaving the house like just a lot going on and the role if you hadn't seen it i'm gonna um insert a picture here because <laughs> i can't play the clip i don't want to get flagged but um if you go to my website you can see it on my reel i'll put the link to my reel actually below in the description and it was a character that was like a no-brainer for me. Authoritative, you know, government official, no nonsense, you know, giving you kind of Viola Davis vibes, some people tell me, because of my short hair at the time. And so it was all really me talking, you know? And when I taped this at home to prep for the audition, I didn't memorize it because that's something I do a lot of times. When If I'm short on time and an audition needs to be turned around really quick, I just focus on building the character, well, who is this person? What does she look like? What's her hair like? Like what's her character background? Like all that stuff. I rather focus time on that if my time is short versus do I know all the lines? So I just typed the lines out and read them. So they never got in my brain. You see where this story is going. Now my memorization is, has never been a problem. Since I've been in elementary school, I've been doing storytelling contests and I would, you know, come in second place a lot of times and memorizing scripts. I grew up in the theater, like memorization is not a thing. Keep that in mind. So I get to set and I'm thinking, yeah, cause it's supposed to be me and some other officials and I'm approaching, talking to them about what's going on. But what turned out to happen was it was just me direct to camera. Because as you can see, if, we, if you watch the clip in the description below for my reel, it was me on a screen and then other people on their screens, which meant we were not in the room together. So even though me and the other actors were on set at the same time, 
we did not shoot together, if that makes sense. So I realize I get to set, they're doing my makeup, and I'm realizing while I'm there, like something's not clicking. I'm just, my body is out of order. Like I just don't feel like, yeah, go time, let's get it. I felt nervous, I felt uncertain, and this is 2017. Like I've been doing this a long time. And I'll get to the lesson at the end, but I just, I was like, God, and then the lines would not stick. I'm looking at the sides, the script, looking at it, reading it, you know, the doing my makeup, trying to repeat it in my mind, and it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. And then I started getting worried. And that's because I'm like, why isn't it here? Why isn't it sticking? And I'm like, okay, maybe we find the other people are there. And then when it's time to shoot some hours later, they take me to this little area on set and it's just me. It's me, a blue curtain, the American flag, and a big old camera in my face, like. And of course, at least, you know, 75 people on set. Like, if you've never had to experience this, if you're not an actor, there are many cameras all over the place. So the makeup artists are seeing what you're doing. The, the, the whole, the, all the executive and the producers and the writers, they have their own little cameras. The, the, the director of photography, all the cinematographers have a little camera. So like my brain then started envisioning all these little cameras of me going blank. And they were like, action. And all I could remember was the first few lines. Dutch intelligence says, and I kept blanking because it was just this camera in my face and I already was uncertain. And it's tricky because there's a light that can go out in your eyes when you're making a mistake. And I'm so hyper aware of cameras. I'm so hyper aware of, of myself as an actor on set. Like this is the stuff I teach my students. So I was so hyper aware that everyone is looking at you right now. Like everyone. Time is money and you're wasting it. And like a little part of me just died inside. Like, and I was trying to do everything not to cry. And I'm just in my brain like, come on, Christine, get it together. What is wrong with you? Get it together, come on. Like, get it together. And I would just close, every time I closed my eyes, I would breathe. And you can tell, anyone looking at me could tell I was about to have a nervous, like a nervous breakdown. Like I was going to melt down out of shame, embarrassment, fear, like, I could get fired right now. They could call casting and be like, who the hell is this chick? She can't, doesn't know what she's doing. Finally, and God bless this director, he came up to me and he, cause he saw me and he felt me. He was so kind and so generous. I'm getting emotional when we're thinking about it because I've never had this experience since or before. And he was like, just breathe. He said, it's okay. He said, just take it line by line. He said, we can edit it all together. He's like, just take it line by line. You got this. And I was just like, I don't, and I said to him, I'm so sorry. I don't know what is wrong with me today. He was like, I watched your audition tape. You got this. See, that's what was tricky. It's not like I was some woman who came off the street and they hoped she was gonna be good. Like they saw my tape. Every single executive, studio executive director had to sign off on me to make sure I would get the part. So when I showed up and clearly something's off and it was bad y'all. It was bad. I got through every line I delivered was, once I delivered the line, it was fine. But coming up what the next line was, it got to the point people had to feed me the line. Like I wish I had a teleprompter, <laughs> for real. So if I delivered it, then it was like Dutch intelligence says blah, 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 blah. Do you have any idea who's responsible for this? Like once I said it, I was in the zone. I knew who this woman was, but putting that all together at once and that camera and the pressure, I just, when I got done, when everybody felt like they got what they needed, the director came back, he was like, you, you made it through, good job. And I remember just wanting to turtle and just, like really thinking about it right now just makes me really emotional because I'm a professional and I don't, I was like, why, what is going on? I was second guessing everything about myself that day. And I was walk as I was getting ready to walk, as I was walking, you know, taking my mic off, giving it to the sound guy, and then walking back, getting ready to walk back to my trailer, I kept getting stopped by different people on set. You know, different crew members. Like, oh my God, you remind me so much of Viola Davis. You were amazing. And I'm looking like, what? And people are like, and then might be a makeup artist. Girl, you rock that. It's like, I know it was a little rough at first, but you, you got, you got it. You just something about you. Like, yeah, I had like 
four or five of people, four different, and not like people huddled and like trying to make me feel good on the way out. It was like different pockets of people. I watched you on camera. Wow, you were really powerful. I was like, were y'all in the same room as me? Like, this is one of the worst days of my life on set. When I got home, I remember sobbing to my husband, sobbing. And then I just, you know, I had to meditate that next day when I was able to think clearer and put some of the, um, just of the emotion to the side. Cause I kept saying, what's going on with me? What's going on with me? And then it hit me. Girl, you were in the middle of uprooting your entire life cross country. You were leaving everything you know, all your friends, all your family, moving to California on a dream and a hope and a wish, leaving your security of your job, uprooting your husband who's never left his people, moving, packing, yard sales, still working your nine to five while doing all of this, and then in the middle of it, bam, an audition, bam, a booking. So though I was grateful for it, it was like, there is a lot on your plate. You're stressed. <laughs> you are stressed out. And I was just like, oh. it was this grace that came over me. It was just like, that's what's going on. And, it, it, and I know in hindsight, it should seem so obvious, but when you're in it, it just, it felt like I was off. Christine Horn was off and I had no idea why. I was must have lost my mojo. No, I was stressed and under extreme pressure. I was carrying a lot of weight, a whole lot of uncertainty about everything. I was barely getting any sleep. I was exhausted and I was stressed out. And what that experience taught me and what, and yes, the director did not lie. Of course, as you will see, if you click the link, I have a problem saying click the link. I'd be like, click the link. <laughs> the words sound are too close together. Click the link. Click the link, y'all. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be my new thing. Just click the link. Like, where is she from? Click the link, honey. Click the link. Um, <laughs> but seriously, ever since then, it reminded me to check in with myself before auditions, especially in-person auditions. Check in with myself when I'm on set, which means, you know, doing what I need to do in the morning before I even get in the car to drive to set, stretching, having my tea, having my morning rituals, lighting a candle, whatever I need to do to center myself, calm myself, even when I'm on set, playing music that makes me, that soothes me, or that is in the vein of the character and, and what my character needs to live in the space that I'm about to take on. Like that's what MacGyver taught me. Most people do not know this story because again, you see the finished product, looks great, that's why you always gotta give mad love to your editors because these editors, honey, will fix you or they will break you. <laughs> so I have so much love and appreciation for editors. Oh my God, because I was a mess that day. But I'm glad to see what did shine through and I can, in hindsight, appreciate the, the compliments I was getting because people may have seen me struggling in a moment, but what they also saw was the gift that was there. And, and that meant everything to me. So that is my MacGyver story, y'all. Who I got more stories where this came from. It's like if people only knew, you know, and I'm not alone. The actors and celebrities that you watch in movies and TV shows, we all have stories like these, but we know how to put on a face and we're grateful for our editors and our makeup artists and our hairstylists, people who hold us together because it takes a village. Really, you see one person on camera, but there's so many other people supporting that artist to, to help them be the best that they can be. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you come back next week. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Um, I'm gonna make it a surprise for you next week. I don't know what I'm gonna talk about just yet, but I hope to see you then. Bye.